Hey everyone, welcome to this episode in the Finding Your First Bug series. It's been a while for Finding Your First Bug. Um, I really wanted to end the series when I started talking about impact, but actually I was kind of working on a video about iOS testing and realised actually a beginner can totally do this. This is not this that hard, right? Um, so I'm making two videos. One is going to be a kind of beginner's guide. You can totally hunt bugs with everything I show you in this video. 100%, don't worry. And I'm going to show you a more advanced video for people who have like a programming background where we can sort of look for more uh, technical bugs, more specific bugs. So welcome to finding your first bug. Um, it's been a while, I'm sure. But today we're going to be talking about iOS testing. I'm going to show you how to get an entire iOS testing setup done uh, using an old iOS device. Um, I do recommend using an old one simply because you really don't want to mess up your main device. Although saying that we're not doing anything like major with what we're doing today, so it should be fine. Once again, this video is very kindly sponsored by Integrity. And you know, I'm sure at this point you've heard me talk about them a lot. Um, Integrity is a uh, bug bounty platform um, similar to like HackerOne and BugCrowd. They're smaller and they tend to focus on more European customers. You totally don't have to be European to use to join and use them. Um, but they focus on European customers, so the targets are European. Um, and they're, you know, they're smaller, but actually they have quite a wide range of targets despite their size. There's not that many hackers hacking on them, so actually there's, you know, quite a lot of room there for some really interesting bugs as well as some really interesting targets. Um, they're totally active on social media. They're always interacting with the community. They're always really quick to help out if you've got any issues. Um, and actually, one of the cool things they do is if you're not necessarily ready to take on a real target yet, they actually have XSS challenges for you to test your skills. Um, and they're often based off of new XSS work. So you can read a few articles, understand the basics, and then practice with their XSS challenge. And unlike a CTF where you just get, you know, well done, congratulations, you get like a prize. You get like Burt Premium. It's great. But I'm all about the community focus. It means a lot to me. Um, and they're not just investing in me. They're actually investing in quite a lot of other creators um, and sponsoring videos and newsletters. And one thing that I really like working with them is that they kind of, they let me make the content I want to make. They don't force me to make certain content um, or like force me to kind of interrupt my flow. It's great. I don't take having an advertiser likely. I really do think Integrity is a good platform. 100% uh, my actual opinion. Um, and actually, you guys seem to be liking it too. And that means a lot to me. You know, I don't have many advertisers on my channel. But it's really nice to know the ones that I do have that people are signing up, are using them. And even better, you folks are getting bugs. I've heard about people finding their first bug. I've heard about people getting bounties. And that's so cool. So if you want to sign up, go to go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. The link is on the screen. It's also in the description. Um, and I'm really happy everyone's kind of been really receptive to them. Super pleased. And one of the great things that having a sponsorship does is it lets me invest in my like channel. Um, this entire, like my new audio setup was solely because of my, the sponsorship. And it helps, you know, you all got through USB microphone era, Katie. Um, so I'm really pleased that everyone is so receptive and it means a lot to me that you folks want to sign up. You folks really want to get involved and that you are hunting and finding bugs. That's brilliant. But today we're talking about iOS hacking. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking about mobile hacking. They're like, ah, oh, that sounds really hard. Um, but actually iOS hacking is really cool. It's well worth learning. Um, you do need a spare iOS device. However, there is an iOS emulator coming out that Cody is working on. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to check it out. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it with an actual iOS device. And one of the real benefits of it is it's really niche. It's really low competition. Uh, from BugCrowd's recent report, only 2% of hackers hack iOS. Um, and, you know, for HackerOne, the, the stats are very similar. Very few people approach iOS. I mean, you've got people doing Android and... You know, Android is really easy to get set up, so there's a, a competition there. But iOS, you know, people think it's really difficult, but actually it's really easy. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to get started. So 
what are we going to do? Um, this is video is going to be primarily a demo. The first one is I'm going to show you how to jailbreak an iOS device. Then I'm going to show you how to bypass SSL pinning. So iOS and Android as well apps have something called SSL pinning um, that we have to turn off by using an exploit. Um, so what we do is we jailbreak the device to load the exploit. So that way we can see what um, is like what traffic's coming through the app. You can't see that unless SSL uh, pinning has been turned off. So that's what we're doing then. Then I'm going to show you how to install Burp's uh, certificate. And then we'll show how traffic you can get traffic from iOS to show in Burp. And then I'm going to do a demo on bug hunting. So this one is all demo. So the one thing we're not going to do. Um, a lot of people will want me to show you Frida. So Frida is basically a tool that hooks into iOS apps while they're running. And so you can see what they're doing under the hood. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. It requires some programming knowledge. So we're actually going to talk about it in a later video, um, specifically about Frida and the bugs you can find with Frida. Um, so let's get started with the de first demo. So the first demo is going to show you how to jailbreak. Now I'm using an iPad mini 4 with iOS 13.1 and I'm using a Checkrain um, uh, jailbreak because for me it's the one that tends to stick. I have a lot of problem with Uncover. Um, it just doesn't like to stick on my device. So let's get started with the demo. So welcome to the demo. As you can see, I have my iPad set up here. This is an iPad mini 4 running iOS 13.1. Um, and on my desktop here, I have a MacBook. The jailbreak I'm going to be using is called Checkrain. It's the best stable one um, really for iOS at the moment. Um, so I'm going to press start on the jailbreak and it's going to put my device into recovery mode. So I'm going to let it do that. And as you can see, the screen's kind of going black. It's looking really uh, worrying, but it's just entering recovery mode. We're going to have to put it in DF, DFU mode in a second. And DFU mode involves pressing the buttons. Right, so you can see on the instructions, um, it's really going to help us do this. So the first thing we need to do is click start and then press the home and the top buttons together. So I'm going to Specifically, it's going to load the exploit as the device boots. If you want to know more about the Checkrain jailbreak and how it works, it's actually really interesting. Um, it's due to a hardware fault that all modern uh, iOS devices have, so it's actually compatible with nearly every single iOS device. Um, so it's going to run here. One thing I will say about jailbreaking is it should avoid updating your iPad or iPhone, whatever you're using, and it shouldn't be your main device. So what we need to do now is put in our passcode and I've got a very secure one that's a lovely pattern and we can see here that Checkrain has appeared whoops, on our home screen and then from here we can now install Cyndia. So we see it, we can install it and it's going to install it. Now to bypass the SSL, we're going to use something called SSL bypass, or SSL kill switch, sorry. And this requires some packages from Cyndia. We need Debian Packager, Cyndia Substrate, and then Preference Loader. And once we have those, it's quite simple to get the jailbreak sorted. So we have it installed. We're going to go to Cyndia, and we're going to install those packages. So the first one we're going to go for is the Preference Loader. So we're going to go to search Preference loader install confirm um, and this basically allows us to install tweaks um, but we're not actually going to use it for tweaks we're going to use it for um, uh, actually installing the uh, SSL bypass um, and we need SSL bypass because a lot of iOS devices have something called SSL pinning and what that means is that it basically pins the SSL certificate it expects and what Burp does is Burp provides its own. 
um, and it won't accept it. It just won't like it. So we have that installed now. Next one we need to get is the Debian Packager. Now there's another one I'm going to add to this uh, when we install it, which is um, a, oh, it's already installed, great. Uh, and the other one was, yeah, we're all good. So what we need to install next is something called Filezer, and it's just an easy way to manage files when we end up um, sending stuff to the iPad. So we're gonna install that as well, that's just an app. And we're gonna go back to our um, uh, iOS, uh, sorry, our MacBook, and we're gonna go up here to um, our SSL kill switch. We're gonna go to releases, and we're gonna download the latest release, and it's this one we want, the .deb. Now, I already have that on my um, computer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this into home, home screen. I'm gonna to go to share via AirDrop and I'm gonna AirDrop it to my iPad. And then we can open that with Filezer. Now this is just a really easy way to transfer files across um, and we can see it's installed, it's like downloaded. All we have to do is install it. So we're going to respring the device and that just refreshes the interface. Um, it looks like it's rebooting but it's not, it's just refreshing the interface. So once we have that installed we can now go to our settings here and if we scroll down under SSL kill switch we now have disable certificate validation. If you are not connected to your home network turn this back on because this is basically what's going to allow a man in the middle attack. Do not, I repeat, do not leave this switched on if you're not hacking. Okay, so um, that was how we get set up with the jailbreak. Now, one th with the SSL bypass now, we actually don't have SSL turned on. So it's really important after we get SS the SSL bypass that you make sure you turn that off when you take your device outside. Um, because as soon as you let it outside your local network, you have basically create, made yourself vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. Um, so that was that. Let's talk now about how to actually get that to work in Burp. So we've got the SSL bypass, which means apps will tell Burp. We need to just install a certificate and actually just enable the traffic on Burp to be able to see it. Now, at the moment, we're not sending anything to our iPad, our, our, our MacBook, because we haven't set up the Burp proxy. So that's what we do next. So we go into settings. We go to general. No network. We go to this. Uh, configure proxy, manual. Okay, now we go back to Burp, and when we go to proxy in HTTP uh, in options, we can see we're running on 127. Now we don't actually want to run from that because that means it's only on our local machine. We want to have it bind to every addresses. So the address of this machine locally is 192.168.1.111. So we'll go to all interfaces, and yes, so now Burp is going to listen on everything. We're going to go into here, and we're going to put in... 192.168.1.11 and our port is the same uh, 8080 save okay now burp should be we should be trafficking putting all the traffic through burp so we go to http colon slash slash burp we can download our CA certificate, allow, um, and then we need to install that into the settings app. So we go into our settings, we go profile download, and we install the, um, the certificate. So then we've got the burp 
certificate installed. Okay, so what does that mean? We've now got burp certificate installed, we've got the SSL bypass, and we have it set up so it should be monitoring traffic via burp. So now, if we go to a website, like for example Google, we should see it on our burp HTTP history. And yes, it's in, it's going on our burp history now. We can see it's we can see it's being called. So we have our iPad can now talk to burp, and we can see all the traffic. So I thought, I hope you found that super interesting, super useful. I thought it was a really great idea and I hope I've presented it at the right kind of beginner level. I really hope you can try and do some um, bug hunting yourself. Maybe find, maybe find some bugs. Um, it's really a cool way of accessing APIs specifically um, because primarily what you're doing when you use an iOS app is you're accessing APIs. Now there are iOS specific bugs and I've, for people who like to read ahead, I have actually linked some below in the description so you can check out um, some really cool ones that use web views. Uh, but that's what we're going to be talking about next week and we're going to be talking about how to use XSS in a mobile app and how that actually works. So I really hope you found this useful. Um, even if you're not hacking with like Frida, this is a really great way to find bugs. Literally, so many of my bugs have just been found using an iOS um, like just getting the traffic through burp. It is the first step, but actually it's a really great first step. And because people people rely too much on how web apps work, mobile apps can be full of bugs and it's really cool. Um, some of my favorite bugs have literally just been a developer shortcuts, right? A developer thought, well, I'll just do this, this, and this will be done. It's fine, I don't have to think about it. But there are some really cool uh, bugs in there where the developer just didn't think. So, Thank you very much for watching. Again, this video was sponsored by Integrity. If you would like to sign up, you can look at my link below, which is go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. It's on the screen right now. Um, are you bug hunting this weekend? Let me know. Tell me what you're hunting on. Are you going to go for Integrity? Or are you going to go... Um, are you going to go look at some mobile apps or some web apps? You know, leave me a comment. What are you hacking this weekend? So... Thank you for watching everybody, I will see you in the next video.